the name and EPA registration numbers of the shippers, carriers, and destination must appear on a. The Emergency Response Guidebook b. Hazardous Waste Manifests c. Material Safety Data Sheets d. Shipping Papers That Require Placarding What are placards? A. Warning symbols for elevated temperature material. B. Diamond-shaped warning signs placed on vehicles. C. Hazard warning labels placed on packages. D. Emergency response information signs. When carrying Class 1.1, 1.2, or 1.3 explosives, you must a. Have a written route plan. b. Park within 5 feet of the traveled part of the road. c. Not leave your vehicle unattended for more than 2 hours. d. Have an armed escort. The hazardous materials regulations are intended to do what? A. Lower transportation costs. B. To control highway maintenance costs. C. Generate alternative revenue for the Department of Transportation. D. To contain the material, communicate the risk, and assure safe drivers and equipment. When transporting hazardous materials, which of the following is not a responsibility of the driver? A. Driver refuses leaking packages and shipments. B. Driver makes sure that the shipper has identified, marked, and labeled the hazardous material properly. C. Driver prepares the shipping papers and supplies the placards. D. Driver is responsible for safely transporting hazardous materials without delay. Which of the following indicates the order in which information must be shown in the description area of a shipping paper? A. Proper shipping name, packing group, ID number, hazard class. B. Proper shipping name, hazard class, ID number, Packing Group C. Hazard Class, ID Number, Proper Shipping Name, Packing Group D. ID Number, Proper Shipping Name, Hazard Class, Packing Group Diamond-shaped warning labels must be placed on hazardous materials packages. If the package can't accommodate a label A. The label can be kept with the shipping papers. B. The package does not need to be labeled. C. The label must be put on a tag that is securely attached to the package. D. The shipper attached the warning label to the placard. Where should placards be displayed if you are required to use them? A on both sides and rear of the vehicle. b. If all packages are labeled, then placards aren't required. c. Placards can be displayed anywhere on the vehicle as long as four placards are used. d. On both ends and both sides of the vehicle. If a W appears in column 1 of the hazardous materials table, what does it indicate about the hazardous material? A. Only applies when the material is being transported by water. B. Only applies when the material is being transported by air. C. Identifies a proper shipping name that is used in international transportation. D only applies when the material will be exposed to water.
How is the hazardous materials table is ordered? A. Alphabetical order by packaging group. B. Numerical order by the identification number. C. Numerical order by the hazard class number. D. Alphabetical order by the proper shipping name. Where must the identification number of a hazardous material appear? A. The shipping paper and the placards. B. The package and the placards. C. The package and the shipping paper. D. The shipping paper only. What is the shipper's certification? A. The shipper's statement that the package contains hazardous materials. B. The shipper certifies that the shipment has been prepared according to the applicable rules. C. The shipper's statement that the product is not safe to inhale. D. The shipper's description of the hazardous materials, including proper shipping name, hazard class, ID number, and packing group. You are asked to transport a package that is properly marked and has a signed shipper certification, but you notice the package is leaking. You should A. Accept the shipment and report it to your dispatcher. B. Refuse the shipment. C. Repackage the material to contain the leak. D. Accept the shipment only if it is a Class II material. When approaching a railroad crossing at which you are required to stop, where should you stop? A. 50 to 100 feet before the nearest rail. B. 25 to 50 feet before the nearest rail. C. 15 to 40 feet before the nearest rail. D. 15 to 50 feet before the nearest rail. You must stop at a railroad crossing if your vehicle A. Has an inhalation hazard placard B. Is carrying less than 1,000 pounds of chlorine C. Has an empty used hazardous materials cargo tank D. All of the above To decide which placards to use, you need to know the hazard class, the amount shipped and A. The identification number B. The total weight of all classes of hazardous materials in your vehicle C. The proper shipping name D. The distance you are traveling If you have someone attending a placarded vehicle that is parked, that person should A. Be in the vehicle and awake or within 100 feet of the vehicle. B. Be able to move the vehicle if necessary. C. Have a hazardous materials endorsement. D. Both A and B. When transporting materials from Placard Table 1, which rule applies? A. Placard required if total amount transported is 1,001 pounds or more. B. Placard required for any amount. C. Placard required if two or more hazard classes are present. D. You may use dangerous placards when you have 1,001 pounds or more of two or more different classes. When you are transporting hazardous materials, the following smoking regulations apply. A. Do not smoke within 25 feet of a vehicle carrying explosives, flammable liquids or solids or oxidizers. 
B. Do not smoke within 25 feet of any vehicle carrying any class of hazardous material. C. Do not smoke within 25 feet of a placarded cargo tank used for Class 3 or Class 2.1 materials. D. Both A and C. If you are transporting Class 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 or 1.3 explosives, you must have a placard if they exceed A. 1,001 pounds. B. 440 pounds. C. The RQ amount. D. Any amount. CDL License Practice Test CDL Practice Test open you up to many top-paying CDL jobs. However, getting these best-paying truck driving jobs, highest-paying CDL jobs and highest-paying trucking companies isn't easy, as some require background checks and or an additional skills test. You'll need a commercial driver's license if you want to drive a truck or other commercial vehicle. A Class A license is one of the CDL designations in most jurisdictions. To get your Class A license, you'll need to do the following. Learn about the CDL laws in your state, including the minimum age requirements. Before you apply, you must meet all of the requirements, including having a valid passenger car driver's license. Apply for CDL permit. Pass a CDL written test and pay the required costs. There are CDL school that offers free CDL training. But there is always have some level of commitment required to the company sponsoring your free CDL training. Think of it more like an NFL athlete that gets a signing bonus. If he ends up quitting on the team before the season starts, he loses the bonus. Most CDL truck companies require you to work for them for a certain amount of time before they waive your tuition costs.